This is a video I promised to make. I've been reviewing the new Everse 8 by EV. I've been demoing it, comparing it to the Bose S1 Pro. I've compared it to the Mackie Thump Go. I've even compared it to the JBL Compact. And I promised to do a demo pairing it up with a subwoofer. So here is one of my favorite compact subwoofers. And it might be my number one favorite when you're talking about um, really portable because it's very light. It's the Bose S1 Sub 1 and it's only 36 pounds. So that is my latest subwoofer that really performs for a live situation. And so we're pairing it up today, but today I'm gonna to be pairing it with a mixer. So here we go. And that is the famous Mackie Pro FX 10. And I'm gonna be playing it um, with a non-copyrighted song. I'm pairing the subwoofer from a AUX out, so I'm able to control it separately, the volume. I even have a foot switch here that I can mute the sub, which is real nice, from the control out. I have, I'm using the high pass filter on the Everse. I've set it to 100 HZ, so I'm cutting out the, the low end and all the low end is going to the sub. Let's talk about setup. So here I have an XLR cable coming from the mixer, left out, one cable left out into the EV, input channel one. I have the volume at minus 15 dB. Uh, the EV is running on battery. And then we have our subwoofer here. The sub one. And there's an XLR cable coming from the mixer. Like I said, it's an AUX out setup. So it's not connected directly to the EV. It's connected to the mixer. And I have it on 12 noon. This is a mobile setup. So I'm running my mixer and the subwoofer off of this external power source. It's called the EcoFlow Pro, and it runs the subwoofer with no issue. 600 watts, bought on Amazon. I'll give the link for the people that are interested. And I found with the Sub 1, it can run on uh, a subwoofer, uh, I'm sorry, an external power source with less wattage than this and less money maybe like a 300 watt unit. But if you play something with heavy bass, like I'm about to play, uh, the sub will shut down on you. So with this unit, 600 watts, I feel very comfortable and no issues. So in a live situation, when you're playing those heavy dance tunes, you don't want to be worrying about your subwoofer. So this to me is money well spent. So this is the control out from the mixer. So from here, I'm controlling just the subwoofer. I can bring it up for those heavy dance tunes. If it's a jazz tune, I don't want that much bass. I'm gonna cut the bass. I can do it instantaneously. You can't do that if, you, if you're connecting your mains into the sub. Here's my mains right here. That's gonna be separate control. Also, I have a foot switch on that subwoofer. So I'm gonna demonstrate how I can immediately a, B it with and without the subwoofer by the press of a foot.
Here I have the high pass filter set at 100 HZ, and I did some testing in comparison to, to the speaker with the sub off full range, and you do gain about three decibels higher headroom with the high pass filter engaged. But my personal opinion is it cuts out a lot of mid-range, kind of makes the speaker sound like a cheaper speaker. Of course, you got your subwoofer filling in the low end, but I do feel uh, it's a more of a hi-fi sound when you, when you run the speaker full range. Like I said, you, you can, it's gonna clip about three de dB sooner, but I think it's just a, a nicer sound, especially at low volume. Three decibels is a lot though. Usually that's about adding a second speaker. So if I'm in a situation where I'm looking for maximum volume, I'm running out of room, then I would definitely engage the high pass filter. So here I have the high pass filter off where it says sub. So the next track I'm gonna play is with the high pass filter off. Like I said, I'm gonna lose a couple of decibels of top end, but uh, give me your opinion if you think it sounds better. Unfortunately, it's a different track, so it's gonna be hard to compare. But tell me what you think of the sound overall. With the Sub 1, you have the option of leaving the stand at home and mounting the Sub horizontally with a sp speaker pole that screws right into it. Some people like this look. Some people like the convenience of not bringing the extra speaker stand. Uh, one person online said it look, kind of looks like E.T. So it really um, depends on what you like as far as aesthetics, but it is handy. it up. So this compact system uh, is a very good performer with that external battery. Uh, it's something you can take outdoors. No AC required. So altogether you got a 750 top for the EV. You got a $900 Bose Sub 1 with the pole and a, and a cable connecting the two. It's about $1,700. So I'm thinking of the JBL Mark II, which is all battery powered for 1250. Uh, this is a higher performing system. It's louder. It's uh, the base definitely goes, really thumps quite a bit more than the Mark II, but um, it's a little more expensive and you have to bring that external power source. So uh, if you're looking for all AC powered, then you, you might be looking at the Bose Pro 8. That is not a battery power system. That's uh, 12, 1300, I believe right now. And this, this base would be much stronger than that. The tops would be similar. The bows would throw 180 degrees compared to this 100, 100 degrees. So it's a different sounding system. I, would, I never tested them back to back. So uh, my next test would be pairing up the EV Everse 8 with the matching EV Sub. ELX 12 sub and that would um, I wouldn't need to use the mixer because that all that's a Bluetooth sub I would so I'm able to control the gain of the sub from Bluetooth which is really great and the EV sub pretty much matches the sub one as far as performance maybe even a little stronger but again it needs uh, an external power source okay so I think this is a successful combination 
Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next one. This is Bill.